Hey all, welcome to ShareTrek. This is Raj here. Friends, uh, I just came across an article which, uh, uh, in which Bluebird uh, claims that they still have an advantage over CRISPR therapeutics uh, despite being priced higher. Uh, I just wanted you to go through this article a little bit and uh, we'll touch upon salient points and then give you my feedback. This is going to be an extremely short video so you don't have to spend too much time. Let's get started. <music> Welcome back, friends. The information that we have so far is that Bluebird has signed up with a payer uh, so that almost 100 to 150 million uh, Americans uh, would get access to CASJV provided they are qualified and the payment will be outcome based. So that's the information we had. And we had the same information for CASJV as well, a major payer in US with 100 uh, million patients, uh, uh, members across uh, United States. And um, CRISPR also has offered outcomes-based pricing for CASJV. So keep that uh, in the context and uh, let us look at the following press release. So in the JP Morgan uh, 24 conference, Bluebird CEO points to very innovative contract to defend Life Genius pricing premium over CRISPR rival. Now, uh, in this article, I think if the focus is going to be just on pricing, I think that's not sufficient. We also have to talk about the black box warning, but that aside, let us go and have a look at what this says. It says Bluebird Bio's 40% list price premium for Life Genia compared with Vertex and CRISPR Therapeutics' sickle cell disease drug um, uh, surprised many industry watchers last month, but Bluebird CEO Andrew Obenshine argues the prices for the gene therapy rivals shouldn't be directly compared. He says you can't just compare $3.1 million, $1 million to dollar 2.2 million. You have to do the comparison with the fact that you only pay if it works, Obenshine said during a session at Fierce JPM uh, week alongside the annual JP Morgan Healthcare Conference. So this article is coming from uh, Fierce Pharma and uh, you can always check it. I'll put the link in here in the de description for you. So. This is a bit scary for me from a Bluebird perspective. He says, you only pay if it works, which probably means that there is no payment if it doesn't work. I mean, that's how I would take it. We need to have more transparencies from these uh, gene uh, therapy companies. They have to tell us as shareholders what they are doing and uh, how they are pricing it and how they are managing the contingent liability that out of the 100 patients that they have treated, maybe 20 or 30 may have... Uh, VOEs and they will have to be paid back. We need to know that. So that was the first point of observation I had here. And it says Ob Obenshine was referring to the outcomes-based contract that his company is offering to payers for a life genia. Under the deals, patients are followed for three years after treatment with the gene therapy and payers won't pay the full price if a patient is hot hospitalized because of vasco occlusive events associated with sickle cell disease. So here it says the patient won't pay, uh, pay full price. And Obenshine is saying with the fact that you only pay if it works. So those two are contradictory. Either they pay or they don't pay, or they pay but they pay less. One of those things has to be true. I think they pay less is what is true. Uh, so that's what we have to keep in mind. Right now, we don't know what CRISPR is doing, whether they also have a similar arrangement. Qualitatively, we are not able to compare both of those deals because of, again, lack of information. So citing competitive considerations, the Bluebird CEO wouldn't give further details about the deal terms, only saying the company offered a very innovative contract that has been well received by payers. In the months since Life Genius approval, Bluebird has signed two major reimbursement deals with separate insurers that together cover 200 million people in the US. The company is in further advanced discussion with 15 different medical uh, Medicaid agencies. Uh, the contracts for Medicaid will vary significantly from commercial payers and uh, uh, Bluebird will be flexible when working with government organizations, he added. So Bluebird is positioning itself as being flexible and competitive and that 200 million coverage is way more than what CRISPR has got for CASJV. And if they succeed, even with half of the 15 different Medicaid agencies that they are talking to, that's going to increase their 
area of influence. But at the same time, the main concern is the building contingent liability with every patient that is signed up. So it says, in addition to the payer deals, Bluebird has offered different contracting mechanisms to treat uh, to treatment centers. Without going into detail, Obenshine said hospitals can either pay for life genia upfront and assume the risk for of reimbursement, or Bluebird can help them mitigate the payment risk. Bluebird now has 35 qualified uh, treatment centers for life genia, and the company expects to expand to 48 soon. So now we have another element that is coming to focus, the possibility that uh, the treatment centers will have to buy life genia from Bluebird and then give it to the patient. So there's a middleman out here, and what are the premiums? We need to get more information from, from Bluebird about this. Probably we'll never get it because it will be business secrets. Uh, so we have to take it on faith that they are negotiating a profitable contract and that they are doing the necessary reserves building in order to meet the contingent liabilities. So when we look at um, revenue estimates for Bluebird, we'll have to keep factor those things in mind and the revenue may not be exactly the number of patients multiplied by the dollar price figure. Instead, it may be different. So that's another wrinkle in the estimation process. When we got approval, I had to sit there and say, well, this is what we believe. Uh, one month after approval, I don't. I, I think need to, I can point to 10 more centers and 200 million lives. That's how the conversation goes. So anyway, they are, Every company has to be proud of what it has achieved, and that's what uh, Obenshine is doing out here. And um, unless we have some specifics uh, from CRISPR Therapeutics and from Vertex, it's going to be very difficult to uh, identify who is better and who is not. And uh, as a result, uh, I would say that uh, on the surface, CRISPR deal seems much better because the price is $1 million lower, and there is no black box label for uh, cancer. Uh, and uh, that makes uh, CRISPR therapeutics CASJV superior. However, now that we have heard what Obenshine had to say about Bluebird's arrangements, uh, it has got three elements that I have noted in the conf uh, in this uh, uh, press release. Uh, the first one is that uh, Obenshine says that patients don't pay if it doesn't work. The second point is what the Fierce Pharma article mentioned, is that patients pay less if it did not work. So those two are contradictory. We have to figure out what is the correct one. And uh, then the third point we got is that there are more than 100 million uh, patients covered by partners with whom uh, Bluebird has signed. So Bluebird has access to around 200 million Americans at this point of time. And it's working on 15 more Medicaid partners uh, in order to extend it to more people. Whereas with uh, CASJV, it's only a payer signed up who has um, under coverage for 100 million Americans. So that way, I think uh, Bluebird is making headwind. The final point I'd like to make as an investor is that we don't know uh, how they're handling the contingent liability. Contingent liability is a liability that may or may not happen. And typically, companies are uh, required uh, to mention contingent liabilities in the footnotes, uh, saying what is the contingent liability and what would trigger it, so that investors have a clear understanding. So the way I look at it is when uh, both CRISPR Therapeutics as well as uh, Bluebird sign up more and more patients, they are going to rake up more and more contingent liability. So the contingent liability has to be sized to do a meaningful valuation, but we can't do that because those will be trade secrets and we'll never know. So we have to probably watch a few more balance sheets, uh, annual balance sheets to get an idea of what percentage of billing gets converted into actual revenue. And um, also, we don't know the cost of uh, manufacturing these therapies. So we don't know what is the profit margin. So friends, uh, overall, I think uh, genomics is murky. Uh, we don't have uh, much information. And uh, there is a high risk element in everything. But said, having said all of that, I think Bluebird and CRISPR are least risky right now because they have monetized products already in the market and revenue is starting to come in. Uh, but the others, we don't even know how many of them are going to be able to come up with a successful product and uh, launch it into the market and monetize it successfully. So that's the, uh, that's the thing that we have to keep in mind. So this was a little bit that I wanted to talk to you about. I hope you liked this video. Please do not hesitate to put a like out there. And please put your comments. Uh, and uh, it helps me to understand where you're coming from. And what do you think about CASJV and uh, Life Genia? Which one do you think is going to do better? 
and what are your thoughts about this kind of uh, outcomes based pricing uh, do you think it's a winner uh, do you feel there is going to be any contingent liability does that move the needle for you in terms of risk so with that said my friends i would like to catch up with you in the next video bye for now